One of the biggest unsolved mysteries in the Naruto world is probably something you've never thought of before, which I guess would mean that it's not one of the biggest unsolved mysteries, but it's one of the biggest unsolved mysteries to me because I think about everything that keeps me up forever. And listen, if you haven't thought about what we're gonna be talking about today, congratulations, you're happier than me. You were able to consume Naruto, watch it once and go, hmm, good story, goodbye forever. Not me, it's my job, has been for the last three and a half years. But when you dedicate a large portion of your life to something, you tend to stumble upon things that other people tend to think of as non-factors, but to you, they're very important. And that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. See, this colossal unsolved mystery we're gonna be talking about is just a piece in the very long story of me trying to get a complete and total understanding of the universe that I spend five days a week talking about. And since I know that there's a fair amount of you who are also looking for a complete and total understanding of this gorgeous universe that is Naruto, I figure this is also something that a fair amount of you would be interested in. So what is this grand mystery? Well, the grand mystery we're gonna be talking about today is the Akatsuki rings, and more specifically than anything, the role in which they were supposed to play in the Naruto universe. Now to many of you, when I say the Akatsuki rings, you just think, oh, yeah, those accessories that the bad guys wear, how important could they be? I mean, sure, every single one of them wore their ring on a different finger, and they had different kanji, and they were different colors, but that was just to help the Akatsuki members identify who was who, right? Well, no, not right. See, because while, well, yes, these rings were to help add character development and character design to every single member of the Akatsuki, they also possibly played a massive role in the plot, and a role that would have been much larger if Kishimoto had been allowed to make Naruto longer than it was. That is to say that in Kishimoto's ideal telling of Naruto, that the Akatsuki rings would have had as much time dedicated to them as something like the Seven Swords of the Mist, which were also technically supposed to get more time, but once again, as editors said, we can't spend all this time talking about accessories and swords. But because we know that Kishimoto wanted to tell us more about the Seven Swords of the Mist and the Akatsuki Rings doesn't necessarily mean that we know what he wanted to tell us. See, because it's not like Kishimoto came out and said, oh, my editors made me cut all the information about the Akatsuki Rings and the Seven Swords of the Mist. It's just that Kishimoto laid seeds throughout Naruto's plot about the Akatsuki Rings and about the Seven Swords of the Mist that were supposed to pay off later and arcs dedicated to telling us the history and meaning of these items. So there really is no way for me to sit here and confirm to you with 100% certainty exactly what the Akatsuki Rings were supposed to do. But there there are multiple times throughout the story of Naruto where people of grand importance to the plot put their lives on the line for the recovery of Akatsuki rings on the fingers of dead Akatsuki members. And it's moments like these and a couple other moments that made close watchers like myself ask the question, why are these rings so important? And the answer that I and many people on the internet have come to is pretty astounding. That is to say that without the Akatsuki rings, they're really wouldn't have been much of an Akatsuki at all, as the Akatsuki rings were not only just accessories, but vital and pivotal pieces of technology that the Akatsuki members had to hold on to in order to extract the tailed beasts. But unfortunately, the exposition that was going to be given to them in order for us, the reader, to see just how important they were to the plot was cut for time constraints. But fortunately, I have the opposite of that issue. I'm always looking to fill up more time, which is why today I'm gonna walk you through why we know the Akatsuki rings were so important and what their exact purpose was meant to be. And today, you all get a Subway Surfer version of my video because if you don't want to watch me, you can watch my two dogs fight behind me. Well, one and a half of my, the other one's a foster and she's a girl and she keeps trying to hump wag you. So lots to unpack there. Before we get to explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell. And if you want to support me and by extension, support these idiots, go ahead and follow my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where I talk about all anime, not named Naruto and Boruto. And if you really want to make sure that I have enough money in my pockets to keep these guys fed, go ahead and follow my podcast, Who Talks Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you want to see me have enough money that I can keep making mistakes, like bringing in foster animals, then please meander into my merch store, TakuzAnonymous.net where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. Listen, fostering animals isn't a mistake, but fostering this one was. But we got her adopted. It's just gonna cost a thousand dollars to ship her to JFK. The Wagyu does love her, so, I mean, she has a soft spot in my heart. But before we get into all that, guys, today we have one of our favorite reoccurring sponsors to the page, BetterHelp. Therapy is a tough thing to talk about in our society because some people assume that when you tell them you're going to therapy that you're broken. But that couldn't be further from the truth. See, I personally have been going to therapy for for years because I view the brain like I view any other muscle on the body. If you want to live a long and happy and healthy life, you got to work on it. Therapy and more specifically better help has allowed me to understand that my worth is a lot more than just the numbers and amount of likes 
I get on social media. That I'm blessed to be in the current situation that I am and that many people out there would kill to be in my spot. And I genuinely believe that without better help, I would have fallen into the trappings that a lot of content creators do. When the views get low, so do the emotions. Fortunately, BetterHelp's 100% online platform and over 25 thousand licensed therapists were able to help me find the perfect therapist for me to help me through these tough times. All I needed to do upon signing up for BetterHelp was answer a couple of questions and tell them my preferences in therapy, which allowed BetterHelp to align me with the perfect therapist. And the beauty of BetterHelp is that I have 24 seven access to my therapist. We can talk over phone, over video call, or even over text. And while this isn't anything I've ever personally had to deal with, if you do not mesh with your therapist, you're able to switch at whatever time you want. With BetterHelp, you get all the professionalism of going and seeing a therapist, but at an affordable cost and within the comfort of your own home. And you guys can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash nchammer, or by clicking the link in my description. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash nchammer. So what are you guys waiting for? There's nothing wrong in asking for help. I know I have. So the Akatsuki rings, one of the most understated yet important accessories in all of anime history. However, when I say think of important ninja items from Naruto, pretty much the last thing that any of you are going to say is the Akatsuki rings. Because for all we know, they weren't ninja items. They were just rings. They weren't kunai, they weren't shuriken, they weren't summoning scrolls, they weren't a plank to switch positions with, they weren't even the seven swords of the mist. And yet they might have played a more important role than all of those things I just listed. But how do we know that? Well, before we dive into what I think the Akatsuki Ring's purpose in Naruto was, let's go over all the reasons that I believe that the Akatsuki Ring's played an important but silent role in Naruto. Which brings us to one of our favorite talking points in all of Naruto, Orochimaru. See, as we all know, originally after leaving Konoha, Orochimaru ran to the Akatsuki and was a member of the Akatsuki for a fair amount of time, probably somewhere in the region of six to eight years. And over the course of those years, Orochimaru became a somewhat vital addition to the Akatsuki. And this is evidence by the fact that they became a full-fledged member with a cloak and a ring and everything. However, as we all know, Orochimaru's stint to the Akatsuki had an ending, specifically when Orochimaru tried to take over Itachi's body and failed. However, when Itachi was able to flip Orochimaru's jutsu back onto Orochimaru using his Sharingan, Orochimaru, instead of trying to laugh it off and play it off as a practical joke, decided to just leave the Akatsuki. However, when he left the Akatsuki, he absconded with the ring he was given, which the Akatsuki was never able to recover, as they tried to catch Orochimaru for years, but failed. But Orochimaru absconding with this ring could possibly be one of the reasons that the Akatsuki was perpetually after him. See, because, well, here's the thing. Obviously, Orochimaru attacking one of their own and trying to take over Itachi's body while a member of the Akatsuki wasn't a great look for the Akatsuki. Kakuzu is stated to have killed his past three partners before getting Hidan, and he's on nobody's hit list. In fact, the Akatsuki just keeps giving him new partners. So if Kakuzu was able to kill members of the Akatsuki, why isn't Orochimaru? Every single member of the Akatsuki has stacked bodies. And while obviously Itachi was a very important member of the Akatsuki, and obviously the members that Kakuzu killed weren't all that important, it still stands to reason that Orochimaru trying to kill Itachi would probably be swept under the rug as long as he like apologized and was like, I just really want that body. But Orochimaru, probably because they fully understood that Itachi could kill them whenever he wanted to, decided that it was best to not coexist with him. So Orochimaru made the correct decision and left the Akatsuki. But that still brings us to our problem. Why was the Akatsuki so obsessed with tracking them down? Well, if you buy into the theory that the rings play a massive amount of importance to the Akatsuki, the return of Orochimaru's ring to the Akatsuki could explain why they were so dedicated. And this theory makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that prior to Orochimaru leaving the Akatsuki, there was 10 members. But after Orochimaru absconding with the ring, they stuck to nine. And they stayed that way. They never made a 10th ring. They never invited another member. It was just if one member died, they would try to replace them. And thus, because technically Orochimaru outlived the Akatsuki, the Akatsuki stayed at nine members until their end. Now I know a lot of you are saying, but wait, Nick, isn't Dator Orochimaru's replacement? And that's why he hated Orochimaru and was so dedicated to his capture because Orochimaru leaving the Akatsuki was the reason that Dator was recruited. Therefore, if Orochimaru hadn't abandoned the Akatsuki, Dator never would have been recruited into it in the first place. Well, yeah, kind of. See, Orochimaru leaving the Akatsuki is the reason that Datoro was recruited. But because the Akatsuki now had to switch from 10 members to 9, the teams had to be restructured. And since Kakuzu was always killing his teammates and random members of the Akatsuki prior to the finalization of the 9 that we know and love kept dying, that vaulted Datoro up as the ninth member of the Akatsuki, who had to be shifted to be teammates with Sasori, who was teammates with Orochimaru prior to their abscondment. But this isn't the only weird moment with the rings in Naruto. After Orochimaru's 
disappearing act, Dator and Saucery take a big step forward into the limelight as they catch Gara and they extract Shukaku. And now, well, ultimately, this series of events does lead to Saucery's death at the hand of his grandmother and Sakura. Dator does not die in this fight, but he still needs to run away from this fight. And while Dator is fleeing from this fight, more specifically, fleeing from Kakashi, Kakashi, while trying to catch up with Dator, is using Kamui. And while Kakashi is trying to use Kamui to tear Dator asunder, because Kakashi's eye is going blurry and because Dator is so far away and flying, Kakashi is only able to rip off Dator's arm. However, it's his Akatsuki ring arm. And while one would assume that Dator would be really broken up about losing his arm, especially when you consider the fact that Dator's entire kit is predicated on his hand mouths that are able to mold the chakra into the clay that he's using. And without these mouth hands, he wouldn't be able to make his art explosive. As without the ability to knead explosive release into the chakra that he molds into his birds and dragons and people, he would just be a guy who flies around on a bird. And while flying around on a bird is awesome, if the bird don't go boom, what's the point? However, instead of being concerned about the loss of half of the capacity of his ability to make explosive clay, Dator are well embarking on what is an incredibly dangerous mission, mind you. That is, returning to the area in which Kakashi ripped his arm off to go find the arm that was ripped off, Dator seems eerily more concerned about the ring that was on the hand that was ripped off than the hand itself. But in moments like this, where people like Dator, a character of massive importance, are worrying about something that seems non-consequential to us, but incredibly consequential to them, there must be something that we, as readers don't know. And what's wild is that this isn't the only time that members of the Akatsuki risk their lives for the retrieval of Akatsuki rings. As Toby and Zetsu post Saucery's death, as Toby is Saucery's replacement, embark on what is essentially their first mission together, which is the recovery of Saucery's Akatsuki ring. Not Saucery's body, one of the most powerful puppets of all time. Saucery's Akatsuki ring. But why would they do any of this? Why risk their life for the recovery of jewelry? Well, that's probably something that Kishimoto wanted to tell us, but never quite found the time. See, this is something that happens rather commonly in longer manga. Seeds are planted to get us invested in a topic, but that topic never pays out. And while sometimes that's just bad writing, other times it's because Kishimoto and his editors wanted Naruto to be exactly 700 chapters long. And thus, in order to hit that pretty, pretty 700 mark, some fat has to be trimmed off the sides. And somewhat unfortunately for us, that fat looks a lot like the introduction and explanation of what the Akatsuki rings were meant to do. But the rings aren't the only thing that this happened to. The Seven Swords and the Seven Swords Men of the Hidden Mist were originally supposed to have their own entire arc that dove into the history of every single one of the swords, why they looked like that, their abilities, and the stories of their previous owners. On top of this, the arc also would have explored the Hoshigaki clan and explained why they look like sharks. And if you want to take it even one step further, you could say that Hidon's immortality is something that gets introduced but never truly fleshed out, all in order to make sure that Naruto never reached One Piece levels of length. Which, by the way, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Naruto's just as long as One Piece if you add Boruto in there. But like, no. Naruto in totality is 500 episodes. Boruto is 230. That's 730 episodes. Even if you look at the mangas, I'm pretty sure that One Piece is in the 1100s right now. And Naruto is 700 chapters and Boruto is 85 chapters, but those chapters are 40 pages long, which is about two and three fourths chapters. So if you do the math, it's about 230 ish chapters, which means that Naruto, including Boruto, is 930 chapters long, which is still very long, but not nearly as long as One Piece. None of this answers our question. Why are the Akatsuki rings so important? Well, as it stands, there's there's two really good explanations. However, there's also the possibility that both of these explanations are correct. See, the first explanation has to do with a rather interesting aspect of the Akatsuki rings, and an aspect that a lot of you probably already know, and that is the fact that every single Akatsuki member wears their ring on a different finger, which aligns with the fact that originally there was 10 members of the Akatsuki. But why? Why do they all wear their rings on different fingers? Well, it's believed that every single member of the Akatsuki has a different role to play in the extraction of tailed beasts, and therefore the finger on which they wear their ring in indicates their role in the extraction of tailed beasts. Or even more specifically than that, the finger in which they wear their ring on indicates what finger on the ghetto statue they stand on during extractions. And this is corroborated by the story very clearly. As when every single member of the Akatsuki stands on one of the ghetto statue's fingers, the kanji from their finger is displayed in a green circle below where they're standing. And once they're all standing in the appropriate places, blue chakra dragons shoot out of the ghetto statue and start the tailed beast extraction. This is double cross 
corroborated by the fact that the only finger that's not lit up is the finger that Orochimaru wears their ring on, which is the left pinky. But just telling members where to stand on a statue during the extraction of a tailed beast seems like a stupid reason to put so much importance in the Akatsuki rings. You're like, you're telling me that Itachi couldn't just remember where he needed to stand? And even if somebody didn't remember where they were supposed to stand, I'm sure Nagato could point them in the right direction. And therefore, this theory dictates that not only do these rings tell individual Akatsuki members where to stand during extractions, but also these rings work as a medium to assist in the extraction itself. That is to say that without these rings, the Akatsuki couldn't undergo any kind of bijou extraction, or at the very least that they would have a much harder time extracting any and all tailed beasts, which would explain why they're so desperate to have as many rings as possible. As without the rings, the Akatsuki wouldn't be able to undergo their extractions, which means they wouldn't be able to undergo the Eye of the Moon plan. I mean, extracting tailed beasts is literally the most important role in the Akatsuki. As without all the tailed beasts extracted, you have no tail tails and you have no plan. The other possible explanation for what these Akatsuki rings might do is that they might act as a chakra link for individual members of the Akatsuki, kind of like the Yamanaka for Konoha. That is to say that the Akatsuki rings are the reason that the Akatsuki is able to meet remotely, and this would explain why they're able to use their proxy reunion jutsu that brings all of them to the Akatsuki hideout in their kind of staticky hologram forms, and thus that's the real reason the Akatsuki are so desperate to make sure that their rings aren't out in the wild, because if hypothetically somebody like Orochimaru or somebody from Konoha was able to get their hands on on an Akatsuki ring, they would be able to attend all of the Akatsuki missions. They would be privy to all information being passed around the Akatsuki remotely. And thus the Akatsuki, if even one ring is out in the world, can't be entirely sure that their comms are secure. And when you're actively planning for the downfall of an entire world filled with people who can breathe fire, you need secure comms. And when you consider the fact that the Akatsuki found out that Orochimaru was not only a traitor, but also basically only joined the Akatsuki to get info on all of them, and possibly a vessel in Itachi, Orochimaru being privy to the movings of the Akatsuki because of the ring that they held on to would absolutely be grounds for them pursuing them across the entire globe. And even if Orochimaru wasn't the person using the intel, Orochimaru doesn't really hold any allegiances. So Orochimaru could just as easily be using the intel against them as selling it. I mean, you gotta fund these child experiments somehow, right? However, when it comes down to it, what I personally subscribe to is that both theories are correct. At least to a certain degree. The rings were both necessary for extraction and served as a chakra link between the members of the Akatsuki. That is to say that these rings acted as a conduit for Akatsuki members to link their chakra together, either when they were far apart to use the proxy reunion jutsu or when they were close together to extract tailed beasts. And by being able to use these rings to tap into each other's chakra, they could communicate from far distances and bring all of their power together to extract tailed beasts and feed them to the ghetto statue. Because if we know anything about Naruto, it's actually very difficult to share your chakra with somebody else. Really, there's only two means in which somebody can effectively share their chakra with somebody else. And those two means are ironically either something like Naruto sharing his Shinjuriki cloak with the entire Shinobi Alliance, or medical ninjutsu. Anything outside of those two circumstances really bars people sharing chakra with others. But one can make an argument that things like eight trigrams are kind of a Hyuga member sharing their chakra with somebody else through the medium of pointing their tenketsu points. At the end of the day, that's just about amplifying or shutting down a chakra circulatory system and less about a Hyuga member actually physically funneling their chakra into somebody else. And this is why people like Karin and Jugo are so important and thought of so highly in terms of skill. Because Karin has the ability to share her massive amount of chakra with whoever bites her. And Jugo, who's always passively pulling in nature energy, also has the ability to share that nature energy with others. But since no members of the Akatsuki outside of Nagato have the ability to actively share chakra with others outside of Kisame and Samehata, but that's a specific relationship, they needed to find a way to bring all of their chakra together to pull off incredibly complicated tasks. And since we already know that extracting a bijou took the Akatsuki days, it's a possibility that without the ability to link their chakra together through the medium of their rings, that the extraction process simply would have been impossible. I mean, think about it. Obito, one of the strongest people in Naruto's entire universe, had to attack Kushina on the night she was giving birth. Because of the strength of the 8 trigram seal, if you don't attack her when the seal is weak, Kurama's not getting out. And thus, the reason the Akatsuki members were so desperate to hold on to the rings is because if anybody was brought into the Akatsuki without the ability to link their chakra to everybody else, then the extracting of tailed beasts would become an almost impossible task. Because if it takes nine members of the Akatsuki, some of the strongest and most chakra-filled people in the entire universe, several days of being physically present in a cave trying to extract one tailed beast, the second you start losing rings and therefore losing contributors to this cause, is the second you start spending months at a time extracting one tailed beast. So yeah, 
If I was a member of the Akatsuki, I too would risk my neck to save those rings. But what do you guys think? If the Akatsuki rings have any kind of meaning, what do you think they are? Tell me in the comments below. And while it goes down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And in next week's episode, we're going to talk about what their finger paint means. Not actually. I don't know.